In today's video, we are going to learn how to create this infinite horizontal scrolling animation in Webflow. This is really easy to create and we are going to achieve this in a few simple steps. So without further ado, let's get started. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you find any of my videos helpful. So to get started with our infinite horizontal scroll animation, I'm going to be using a social proof section that we are going to be attaching here. As you can see, I only have the navbar and the header section here. So I'm going to add one more div block. I'm going to select the body, click on the add and bring in a div block. For this div block, I'm going to go ahead to call it section underscore social proof. So this is what I'm going to be calling this particular container following the convention of the header. Then next, I'm going to bring in another div block where we are going to be putting in our images. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to bring in an additional div block. For this div block, I'm just going to call it logo underscore container. So once I have this, I'm now going to bring in the child elements or the images I'm going to be putting in this section. So I'm going to go to the plus and add an image. So for this image, I'm going to upload some images. And here I have six images that I'm going to be using. I'm just going to select every single one of them and bring them in. So first, I'm going to select this very first one here, which is this Dropbox. I'm going to close this up. I'm going to select this image and I'm going to create a duplicate by hitting Command D. You can use Control C, Control V to copy and paste, but with Command D, you can also duplicate this. So I'm going to duplicate it five more times. So here we have six images. I'm going to go to each of them and I'm going to replace the image um, to a different one. So now I have the second one for the third one. I'm also going to change the image to this open table for the fourth one. I'm going to change the image down to Shopify. For the fifth, I'm going to change the image also to Slack. And then for the very last one, I'm going to change the image to this Amazon. So once you have this, you can see here in our logo container, we have all of these items. So the next thing we are going to do is to properly display and space out these images. And to do that, I'm going to change this logo container to flex. And first, I don't want it to stretch. I'm going to center them. Then for the X axis, I'm going to make it space between so that we get an even spacing um, between this particular container. So as you can see here, I also want some padding on the right and on the left. We can easily add the padding to this section or to the logo container, but I want to create a different div for that particular purpose. So inside this logo container, I'm going to right click and I'm going to wrap it in another div block. For this div block, I'm just going to call it carousel underscore slider. So for this carousel slider, what I'm going to do is to add padding. So for the padding here, I'm going to make it 5%. And also for the padding on the left, I'm going to make it 5%. And then I'm also going to give the carousel slider um, like 20 pixel at the bottom and 20 pixel at the top. So basically I'm using it to add the padding around it. So the next thing I want to do now is to have another duplicate of this logo container, right? And I'm going to show you why in a bit. So I'm going to select this logo container section and I'm just going to give it a light background color just so that we can see what we are doing. So I'm going to select this logo container. I'm going to close this up. Select this logo container and create a duplicate by copying and pasting it again. So once you have two instances of this, the next thing you want to do is to select the carousel slider, which is the direct parent div. And then we are going to make this flex. So you can see that we are having this compression between the logos. And the way to fix that is to select this logo container, come down to this, our minimum width. And what we want to do is to give it a minimum width of 100%. So once you have this, you can see that each logo container, because it's the same class, has a minimum width of 100%. You can see that it's overflowing here. So you're going to see here that we have the second logo container overflowing here which is okay, we are going to fix that in a bit. And the way to fix that is to select the carousel slider, which is the direct parent div, come down to this overflow section and make it hidden. So once you've made it hidden, you're going to see that you can't um, see the overflowing part of this particular div anymore. So from here, we are then going to add our interaction. 
And in order to add our interaction, I'm going to select the carousel slider. I'm going to go to interactions and I want it to be a page trigger. So I'm going to click this and make it a page load. So on page load, I'm going to select when page starts loading. I'm going to select an interaction and starts an animation. So for this, I'm going to start a timed animation. And here I'm just going to name this infinite scroll. Once I do that, I'm going to click on this plus to start an action. And the action I want to perform is move. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure I select a logo container here because this is the div block that I want to move. So I'm going to come here, start an action, and it's going to be move. And what I want to do is to move this minus 100%. So I want to move it minus 100% um, to the left. Now you can see that we have this big space, but what we want to do is to add this particular animation to the class. So that way it targets both of the logo containers. So after changing to the class, now we want to increase the duration from 0.5 all the way to 10. And I'm just going to hit save here. Once I hit save, I'm going to come here to preview this. And you can see that we have our animation going pretty nice. But you see that it tends to stop at 100%. So we are going to check this loop button to make this loop. So once we do that, we are going to hit preview. You are going to notice that it also stops at 100%. And the way to fix that is to go back to our interaction. I'm going to select our interaction here. And I'm going to add another animation. And for this animation, it's going to still be moved. But for this animation, I'm going to move it before the initial one we created. And for this, I'm going to make the duration zero and I'm going to make this zero. So we need to add an initial state basically. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And if I click on preview, you're going to notice that we have an infinite horizontal scroll. So you can see that it starts from one again and continues, but we are going to fix a few things. First, I'm going to remove the space here. We're going to work on the main container and we're going to remove this background. So I'm going to switch back to styles. And in styles, the first thing I want to do is to remove this beige background that we have here. So I'm going to select this and switch it back to white. So after changing the color, one thing we want to also fix is the spacing between the last item and the first item of the second container. So what we can do also is to go back to our carousel slider and add some gap. We can add a gap of 40 pixel, um, depending on the gap between your items. You can add a gap of 60 pixel. So after we've successfully spaced this out, you can go ahead to review our prototype. And you can see how beautiful this is, guys. This is how you can create an infinite horizontal scroll animation in Webflow. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've been able to learn a thing, and I hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you want to see more amazing Webflow tutorials like this. Bye for now, and I'm going to see you guys in my next video.